Ajá. Yep. All right. I, for some reason, got tapped to, to do these, so, but I am happy to do it. Thank you for putting in. You put in a long day already, so thank you again. Um, this is Charlie Nelson with Roadside Attractions. Um, once again, these are the generics that we will, you, from your answers, we'll put together a little package like all the other press have been doing, and then we'll be able to boost it, boot it up on someplace called EPK TV, which allows approved press to, to access it for those that didn't get to participate today around the country. So it's a, it's a great tool for us to get the word out. Anyway, so the first question is what attracted you to the story? Um, I liked the, um, you know, the messaging behind it and telling a story about schizophrenia and mental health um, issues in, you know, in our youth. And I thought that that type of um, subject matter was really important. And I also really connect to my character and I thought that she was um, relatable for a lot of young women and I moreover related to her so um, so that excited me. That's great well you know you're, you're not too far out of the, the high school years <laughs> but did you have any uh, need any refreshers on on what the kids were like back in those days or your character who is obviously how did you know building your character who has got this, you know, she's multi-layered, like an onion, peeling it away. I think that so much of what our, um, what teenagers and the youth go through is so much of what adults go through. And we think that it's so different and they're in a different universe, but they're not, especially now they're so complex and so mature for their age and seeing the world and experiencing it in this, in a real time, like most adults are, especially right now. And, um, and so I think that there's a lot of universal themes that just probably uh, kind of expand as you get older, but they're all there already. Um, and I, I have a younger brother. I ask, you know, ask him about, things and it, like specific things you know like vaping's a really big thing right now it wasn't big when I was you know younger so there's specific things but I but I really do believe that the core issues remain the same and and it, it doesn't feel like it's that different it doesn't feel like there's there's so much more that that didn't already exist um in terms of relatability Great. Thank you. Um, now, you, you know, you, you know, it's a heavy duty subject. It was, to, you know, there are, it's, it, there is a healthy dose of humor in there, which I think helps for the uh, younger folks to relate to uh, more so. But, uh, you know, what was it like you getting into character? Because in a sense, I, I don't think it was CG in every scene, here you are doing some scenes, but you have the hallucinations hovering around. Were you able to stay focused on, on what you had to get done in that scene, in those scenes? Um, not always. Distractions. I mean, it, it, not, not always. We, it, we did the scenes first, just Charlie and I, and then, and then they would come in after. So I had, you know, many takes where I was able to just, kind of do it the way with him and see what that was like without the hallucinations. And then when they came in, it felt like I already had my footing to some degree um, and that I could focus a little bit more and, and, and be more present and not as distracted. Um, that being said, all the hallucinations are really funny actors and friends of mine. And so, um, and so there were, you know, moments in that we would, you know, freak out and laugh and be crazy but um but not as much as i think it would have been had the role had the you know order been switched got it no it makes total sense and then just one side note when you say you know you, you they're friends but little six degrees of separation with uh anna sophia and your bridges to terabithia days um 
you know, what was it like? How, how early on did you know that she was going to be in the film as well? Um, oh, I didn't know her from Bridge to Terabithia. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we did a movie um, together maybe three years ago. That's how Oh, sorry, sorry. I got my movies mixed. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, yes, I, I didn't know, I think, until a couple weeks before filming that she was going to be in it, but she's a, a friend of mine and, and I really love her and think she's so wonderful. Um, and it's great to work with her again. Molly Parker, I also worked with before and mm -hmm. it was really lovely to work with her as well. And um, that's the best part about this business is you, you keep meeting the same people again and again and again in different for actors in different suits. So, um, yeah. so it was just a joy. Well, that's great. Yeah, no, great. A familiar face on a new set's probably a very uh, welcome sight. <laughs> um, and one, one last quick question. You know, we're living in our new normal these days, and, uh, you know, the film addresses mental illness, schizophrenia directly, but it can touch on, on the larger. And the population these days is, is uh, you know, you're hearing higher percentages of people with anxiety and depression and in all these other different forms. So what do you hope that this film can bring to light or to uh, the audiences that will be seeing it? What do you hope they take away from it? Um, I hope that they can see their story mirrored on screen and that it's affirmative in some capacity. Um, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that deal with this and um, and it hasn't you know been seen necessarily um, prior, and so I, I I just hope that you know people can relate in some in some way, and um, and if not, that they can learn something about about schizophrenia and mental illness. No, I think it speaks a lot about compassion and you know breaking down you know uh, uh, stigmas. You know, 50 years ago, divorce and then into sexuality and a whole nuance of other things. But, um, uh, you know, I hope that they can really open up some eyes and doors and that it's not a taboo subject. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Studio's done. So uh, you got a couple more, I think, coming up. But thank you very much. Again, thank you for the day and uh, hope to see you in some form in the near future. Yeah, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Charlie. Bye. See ya. Thank see you. Ya. Thank you. Um, Taylor. Hi there. Here's today's daily fact. When books are adapted into films, it's very hard to please everybody. Even Harry Potter's iconic green eyes had to remain blue throughout all the films because actor Daniel Radcliffe just couldn't bear the idea of wearing contact lenses. Remember to click below to subscribe, and if you like my t-shirt, remember you can get one for yourself by clicking the shop link in the description.